Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give a technical review over a paper I presented a few years ago when I worked for University Lands. This is covering evaluating underperformers on University Land wells. So for those of you that work in the Permian Basin, it might be of use for you. As usual, please be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on the video so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. I've been receiving lots of valuable feedback and I've been incorporating the feedback into future videos slowly but surely. Please be sure to hit the notification bell when you do subscribe because I upload every Friday and every Sunday. Every Friday is a professional development topic and every Sunday, is a technical review such as this video. Also, I want to make a special request that if you have any content ideas in mind regarding professional development topics or technical reviews, please be sure to comment them below or message me directly on my social media platforms. Thank you so much and let's continue with the content. Hey everyone, as I mentioned before, I'm going to talk about evaluating underperforming wells on Permian Basin University lands. This was a collaborative effort from the following names that I've, that I've put over here from Hong Ji Zhang, James Forrest, Jane Zhu, and Jeff Spath, when we all had a Texas Oil and Gas Institute organization supporting university lands. And as I mentioned this before, this was a previous Earth Tech presentation that I've given a few years ago. As an overview of the presentation, I'll give the objectives, the workflow, selected areas to evaluate underperforming wells, root causes, improvements for wells of interest, and some of the conclusions that came from this work. For objectives, we wanted to understand current well performance on university lands horizontal wells. Focus targets are Lower Sprayberry, Wolf Camp A through D, and in the Delaware Basin, the Third Bone Spring, Wolf Camp A through C. We wanted to develop a workflow and develop future steps on improving the existing wells and upcoming acreage development. Here's a workflow that I'll go a little bit into detail for evaluating underperformers. You have some data collection in QAQC with the daily data and the volumes of data that we had at University Lands, we were able to do that. We identified wells with the highest completion intensities because they're known to have some of the highest performing wells. High completion intensities would mean tight cluster spacing and large sand and fluid volumes relative for that particular target. We identified the P50 daily production for selected wells to generate type curves and EURs. We compared those normalized EURs from all wells with completion intensities to the type curve normalized EURs. Wells that were more than 50% below the type curve EUR were considered as underperformers. And we identified the root cause of the root of uh, the root cause. Oh, I meant to say more than the 50% type curve, so the P50 type curve, they're considered underperformers. We identified the root cause of that underperformance, such as completion intensity, geology, fluid properties, and existing artificial lift strategy. Then we identified common traits of underperforming wells with respect to each basin and formation in each bench. And finally, we identified re-stimulation candidates or artificial lift optimization based on root cause and well economics. Here's an overview of university lands and the locations of interest. These are denoted from areas two, three, and four. Areas two is focused in the Delaware Basin, in the Southern Delaware Basin, the Texas side of the Delaware Basin. Area three is Andrews County, mostly focused in the Midland Basin, Northern Midland Basin. In area four is Reagan and Erie and County. It encompasses five different counties, but you'll notice that area four is in the southern part of the Midland Basin. Area four is where I want to show you that it encompasses a wide around areas where we split this up into three sub areas. There's the western part of area four, the middle part of area four, and the eastern part of area four, and they're denoted by different types of GORs. Some of the takeaway messages that I want to mention here in this presentation that at least 20% of university land wolf camp wells, lower sprayberry and third bone spring wells are underperforming and uneconomic. And that's about 50% of the wells evaluated in the study. The root cause is low completion intensities in areas two through four, even with recently completed wells. 
The Southern Midland Basin's additional root cause is geology. There's poor reservoir quality and high gas migration eastward. There are improvement opportunities in Area 4, Middle and East to continue gas lift optimization strategies. And then you have possible but highly unlikely refract candidates in areas two, three, and four due to oil rich trend areas, but there are low completion intensities in the vintage horizontal wells. Here's a chart of the well identification and the average lateral length to develop the type curve. You have your average lateral length for your area two wolf camp and third bone spring, your area three lower sprayberry, and the rest of your area four the respective profit loading, fluid loading, and your cluster spacing. You also have the formation and the block for each target in each area and how many wells that you have with production data that it's at least 180 days and you have total underperforming wells in that particular area. So when looking at this chart, you'll notice that 335 wells, or 53% of the wells evaluated, or 20% of all university land horizontals are underperforming. For the single well economics, we used an oil, the, we used these following assumptions of your oil price, gas price, and your NGL price for three stream economics. For production costs, those were your lifting costs that we've used. Working interest, net revenue interest, and capex with respect to, we had respect to working net revenue and capex with respect to each operator's wells that are underperforming. And here's some of the single well economics that we've come up with. And that's still 20% of all university land horizontal wells, which are considered as critical wells. We investigated the root cause. For instance, we looked at completions. There are a wide variety of vintages for these particular wells. Remember, this was presented a few years ago, so obviously the vintages have changed. But you'll notice the lower performers were, have the low side of the of profit loading and the low side of fluid loading, and the high side of cluster spacing. We also looked at RTA results. Wells of interest versus the underperforming wells had low EURs, obviously, and there are a few outliers that had large linear flow parameters in the left side of the chart here. So this x-axis is the linear flow parameter, or your AC square root of K, and your y-axis is your EURs. Then you look at your fracture half lengths, and then your EURs as well. So the wells that were underperforming have relatively low fracture half lengths and low linear flow parameters. We also looked at the total EUR versus the average pumping rate. So your average pumping rate and your low EURs were correlative, except with the lower sprayberry, where you had higher pumping rates, you had higher EURs. Another root cause of investigation we looked at was geology. In area two, this is the oil rich trend of the Delaware Basin. There are some faulting in the portions of the Delaware Basin. It was inconclusive faulted portions deterred production. Underperformance most likely came from completion vintages. You had state spacing up to 300 feet. You had cluster spacings up to 200 feet. And then you had sand and fluid volumes at 1,000 feet of sand and then 20 barrels per foot of sand or of fluid. In areas three, there was virtually no underperforming or uneconomic wells, including vintage. There were high oil saturations, favorable TOC and maturity for lower sprayberry shale to be a favorable landing zone. There are locations with the highest completion intensities and any indication of underperformance came from understimulation. Area four is where geology comes into play, where the west portion of area four had, is an oil rich trend. There are lower reservoir pressures close to the bubble point and effective drawdown strategies would be needed. 
In Area 4, Middle and East, there's poor reservoir quality and gas migration eastward. There's lower TOC due to high maturity or low TOC to tridal rock. And despite high density completions, even type wells lead at the lowest URs. This is where Middle and East is where geology becomes a root cause. Additional root causes we looked at were fluid properties. It could be a sensitive parameter. It could explain why some intervals are or should be more developed than others. And then we looked at artificial lift, where there's least likely a sensitive parameter. A combination of strategies that may not have been generated the highest drawdown. So there's some improvements. You may look into refracts. For candidate selections, we looked at the 200 to 500 foot cluster spacing and low sand and fluid pumped into the area. And then we had RTA results such as low A root K and subsequent fracture half lengths. The results were that we found one to two wells in areas two to three, but questionable incremental economics. And then area four may not be worthwhile despite significant understimulation, just because of the geology. Here's some of the work that was done in artificial lift, and I'll show this in another paper presentation technical review video. But we wanted to give a range of productivity curves and a range of outflow curves to determine what would be the intersection point of the minimum flowing bottom hole pressure needed. And then we looked at the ranges of downtimes for different artificial lift properties. We found that ESPs, again, the data is up until 2017 or 2018, had a wide range of downtimes compared to gas lift and rod pump. So to determine optimal long-term strategies, you want to choose the one with the lowest minimum, which gets you to the lowest minimum flowing bond hole pressure, which gives you the highest cumulative oil production. This is a part of the workflow that we looked at in terms of for areas that may not be good refract candidates, you may want to try improving the artificial lift and lower your minimum flowing bottom hole pressure or reach your minimum flowing bottom hole pressure as soon as you could to get your cumulative oil. So here are some of the conclusions or the takeaway messages that I mentioned before that this workflow effectively helped us narrow down critical wells from a completion space type well with respect to different unconventional formations. Some of the root causes were low completion intensities and then low completion intensities in geology, specifically for area four. Fluid properties can be a sensitive parameter on where more development should occur. And artificial lift is not always a sensitive parameter, but determining optimal strategies is the most effective solution to mitigate future expenditures. And that's the end of the presentation. As usual, please, please to reach out to me through the comments or through my social media platforms if you have any suggestions or if you have any questions about this paper. This is actually Earth Tech. Let me go back so I can say the paper number correctly. If it chooses to move. It's EarthTech 2901615. So please be sure to check out the paper for more details on the economics of these university land wells. And feel free to reach out to me if you want to start a conversation on this. As usual, thank you so much. And I hope to see you in the next video.